Hey everyone, we're gonna see how to use a pre-populated SQLite database in a native script Angular 2 application. So this is actually a continuation on a tutorial I recently did where I showed you how to use SQLite in a native script Angular 2 application. That tutorial did not use a pre-populated database. Uh, it used a database that you create and you populate via the app. Uh, so this tutorial will be using a database that we create elsewhere and then load it into the application. Another thing to note is that I've already done a similar tutorial, whereas I showed how to use a pre-populated SQLite database in a native script vanilla application. It did not use Angular 2. In fact, it didn't even use TypeScript, it used JavaScript. Uh, but like I said, this is, this is an Angular 2 tutorial, and it's also a continuation on a previous one that I did. Uh, so I will show you what the previous application did, and then I'll, I'll roughly go over the source code. I won't go into depth, though, just enough to let you know where we stand. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this application. I'm already in that directory. I already have my simulator up. This does work for iOS and Android, but inside of our terminal, type the following. TNS emulate iOS. All right, so the application is open. There is no data in the database currently. This is one that the application generated. Uh, so I'll click Add. And it added my name, uh, not only to the list of data, but that data is actually being read from the SQLite database. So it inserts into SQLite, then it reads it and populates this list. And it is static data. I can hit Add as many times as I want and it'll keep adding it to this list. This list, it looks a little funny on iOS. Uh, that's just how iOS does things. Um, where it had, has these like ghost phantom columns or rows after it. You can fix that with styling. It's an iOS thing, not a native script thing. Uh, but let's go ahead and quickly review the code uh, that made this possible. Uh, so what we did is we kept all of our code in the app component.ts file and the app component.html file. So in the ts file, the first thing that we really did uh, was we found our constructor method. Inside of our constructor method, we uh, created and opened this database called MyDB. And once it was opened, we created a table if it did not already exist. That table was called people, and it had a column for ID, first name, and last name. Once we created that table, or maybe it was already created, we store that database instance, the open instance, inside of the database variable, and we fetched all of the data from that database. So if we look at the fetch function, if I scroll down, uh, we, did a, we did a select statement, so we select all columns from people, and we, and we really parsed that data, the result set, into an object which we pushed into that people array, uh, which we show on the front end. When it comes to inserting data into that database, what we did is we, we called a simple SQL insert uh, statement. We inserted the first and last name, the ID being a primary key that auto increments, so we didn't have to worry about that. But the data that we're inserting is very static. It's, it doesn't change. Um, I wanted to keep it simple uh, and not use any kind of user-generated input. Uh, when it comes to the front end, I'll go to the HTML file. The front end is just a very basic front end. It has an action bar. It has an insert, like an add button on the top in the action bar. And when we click it, it calls the insert function, which adds my first and last name. It also has that list where we loop through the array of people and display the first and last name on the screen. So that's just the very basic example. So again, I go into way more detail in the previous tutorial, but what we want to worry about now is using that pre-populated database. And the reason why you might do this is because maybe you have to ship your application with, uh, I don't know, 10,000 records of data, and you don't want to have the user download that. You want to ship it with your app so it's ready to go. Uh, there's plenty of other use cases for this, uh, but that's maybe just one example. Uh, so what we're going to use here is uh, one of many possible tools. This tool is actually called DB Browser for SQLite. This is my preferred tool for this task. Uh, it's actually a tool that allows us to create a SQLite database, a file. Um, again, there are plenty of other tools. Use whatever is your preference. Uh, but I've already downloaded this tool, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it. So when you open up this tool, it'll look something like the following. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new database. So I'm going to create this database on my desktop. And I'm going to call this database populated. Populated.db. And click Save. 
So after you create that database, it's going to ask you to create a table. Uh, so we're going to call this table people again, uh, because that's what our application is already designed to work with. So we're going to keep it very consistent. Uh, and inside of people, we're going to create a field. This field is going to be called ID. It's going to be of type integer, primary key, auto increment. I'm going to add another field. This one's called first name. Again, this is exactly what we had in our first tutorial, the code that currently resides. Uh, this is going to be of type text. And then we're going to have a field called last name. And this also is going to be of type text. And I'm going to click OK. So we do have our schema set up. Well, what we want to do is we want to click Write Changes. Because if we don't click Write Changes, anything that we do, it does not automatically save. Uh, so it does not save until we hit uh, Write Changes. We'll go ahead and go into Browse Data. And this is where we're going to populate it with some data. And you can do this with scripts. You can do it however you want. Uh, of course, our sample is not going to be very large. But we're going to click New Record. And uh, for one, I'm going to say uh, Nick Raboy. Of course, we want my name in there. Uh, we're going to add another record. Uh, let's go ahead and say, we'll call this one Jen Looper. We'll add another record. Uh, this one could be TJ Vantol. Let's go ahead and create another one. Let's call this one Nathan Walker. We'll call this one Brad Martin. And let's go ahead and end our sample data set. This is, this is really all we need um, to prove our point. Let's go ahead and write those changes uh, so it's now saved. Uh, so we can go ahead and close out of this. We, we have what we need. We created that database uh, on our desktop and it has some data in it. So I'm going to close out of it. Going back to my terminal, I'm going to exit out of this currently running application. And we're going to copy that file into our project. So if I look at my path right now, uh, I am inside of my project called SQL Project. Uh, what I really want to be in uh, is the app directory. So the first, it's, a, it's in the root level of my project. I'm going to copy that file in. So I'm going to say copy. And I'm going to say desktop, and I call that populated DB, and I'm going to copy it into my project's app directory. Uh, so if I if I go into my app directory, it is there. So it's populated. So I'll go back a level. It's not going to do anything yet. It doesn't automatically copy over. We have to tell it that we have a database in there to copy over, uh, and we can actually do it by typing in the following. So before our uh, SQL statement, before we uh, enter it into our constructor, uh, we're going to add three lines. If C not SQLite dot exists. Uh, so we're, we're saying if, if this database does not exist, uh, we're going to copy it over. So we're going to say populated dot DB. And we're going to say SQLite dot copy database and we're going to say populated dot db so by saying sql sqlite exists it's checking inside of our mobile application to see if that database exists it's not checking to see if we place that file it's checking to see if it exists in our application uh, and copy database it'll copy it from the app directory so it must be in the app directory and i'm going to hit save we also need to change this uh, to, instead of my.db, we're going to change this to populated.db. Uh, so that way it's going to first look for that copied database. Uh, if that copied database doesn't exist because maybe we don't have something to copy over, um, or maybe we made a typo, it'll proceed as normal um, either way. So it'll open it or it'll create it and open it. Our populated database already has the table people. so it's it's going to succeed. It's not going to create a new table. It's not going to drop our table. It's just going to skip over it, but still enter the success. Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a shot and see if it works. So we're going to say TNS emulate iOS. All right, so the simulator did start up the application and you can see it has all of that data that we added using uh, the database browser for SQLite. Uh, so you can see 
not really not too much extra effort to make this possible. We added three lines of code, we downloaded an application, uh, and we can still use all of our already existing code that we would have if um, if we hadn't used a pre-populated. So if I open up my simulator again and click add, uh, it's still going to add more of that static data because I didn't change anything else. It's still there. It's just using a sample data set that we that we defined. So I definitely recommend that you check out the previous tutorial if you want to know more about uh, SQLite and NativeScript, uh, or if you want to check out uh, vanilla NativeScript uh, without Angular 2. I also have some tutorials on that as well.